Hello, friends. It's Robert Selick with Blue Planet Surf Shop. I'm here with Mark Lavelle, um, and he designed the new graphics for our 2024 Blue Planet boards. I think they came out really awesome. We have the this one here, the Wangaroa, and then behind me the Hokipa logo. So we're going to talk about those, and then also this one here. You call it the Papu Papu. Yeah. Um, so let's talk about that one first. Kind of the um, logo that's repeated on all the boards. Pahu Pahu in Hawaiian culture is a catch-all term for a composition. Um, pahu Pahu can be compositions on the skin, like tattoos. Pahu Pahu could represent um, or, or refer to casually um, compositions on cloth, like in tapa. Um, but Pahu Pahu distinctively has a visual connection, a strong cultural and visual connection to the original um, theories of Hawaiian design. So they're usually bold, they're usually geometric, occasionally they can be asymmetric. Um, Hawaiian tattoo isn't uh, intricate, it's not small like Samoan or Tongan. Um, it's not flowing like the Maori and it's not um, blocky, uh, kind of like the, the South Pacific Tahitian Marquesan. It's very, very unique because Hawaii's been isolated geographically and culturally for a very, very long time before the West. So, the Pahu Pahu design is large, it's bold, and it carries a message. So, first and foremost in the front, we have the Blue Planet fish, um, representing the brand identity of Blue Planet, making sure that it is distinctive, identifiable, and clean looking. And just behind it, we have a row of linked triangles at their base with their apexes facing down. This element is um, emulative of shark's teeth, and the Hawaiian name for it is Nihomano. Shark's teeth um, in the right position and for the right purpose uh, represents protection. Below it um, are three rows of linked crescents facing up. And these are um, linked together in such a way as to evoke sea waves. They are kai, or kai nalu, so sea waves. And um, they're not uniform, just like every single wave is, is unique and different. Um, but the element of the kai beneath the uh, nihomano uh, denotes a message of protection over the ocean. We um, are protectors over the ocean. We are responsible for its rejuvenation and its perpetuation. Um, its safety and its life um, is in our hands, generation from, uh, to generation. And so this message um, is both aspirational, cultural, and, um, and, and to my mind, very beautiful. Yeah. So, and then, yeah, I like the idea of being uh, protectors of the ocean. That's what Blue Planet's all about. And then, yeah, the, the logo also repeats here on the rails. And then also on the deck pad, we have those waves. So uh, that came out uh, really nice. And then um, these, uh, the models with this artwork, we have in four sizes. They're kind of more um, high performance surf models. And um, they come in blue, red, and teal. So we have three color options in each size. This, this artwork here is called Wangaroa, and um, just wanted to talk a little bit about the artwork itself and your inspiration for it and so sure. on. As a graphic designer, uh, graphic design is a big umbrella term that encompasses a lot, um, and both as a, a native Hawaiian and an and, and indigenous person. Um, it's really important that the things that we create that draw attention, that become a visual language, whether it's something on someone's skin or something that's beaten into a bark cloth or something that's put on a board, that's not just something um, ornamental or decorative, that it has to carry a story. And the story that it carries has to be purposeful. And that purpose has to be reflective of the time in which it was created but also has to you know, have a sense of timelessness, something that can stand on its own as a representation of that moment, everything good and everything positive about that moment. So when we first started talking about design, 
I think my first um, inspiration was to make sure that there was a strong, meaningful, and emotional association between the boards that you've uh, designed and shaped um, and the stories that they would carry um, from that moment forward. And so I asked you about your favorite um, spots, your favorite spots to surf, your most memorable spots to surf. And one of them was in Fiji, a couple of them were in Hawaii, and then one in particular was uh, Raglan of New Zealand. The indigenous name for Raglan in New Zealand is uh, Whangaroa, Aotearoa. And it's a rugged, beautiful, dangerous, and incredible wave. And the Whangaroa um, concept needed to be grounded in the cultural identity of the indigenous culture that comes from that area, that's the Maori. And the Maori's style is very distinctive, very unique. It's flowing, it emulates nature, it draws um, a lot of associations between what you see in the forest, the waves, the tides, in the same way that a board can move and turn and flow with the energy of a wave and that's a completely natural and organic experience, so too do the lines and uh, the icons and the representation need to flow in the same way. So in this composition, um, in the history of, of Fangoro and the history of New Zealand, Raglan has an incredibly storied and unique uh, place and that's one of the first landing sites of the first human settlers to ever make it to New Zealand, to ever make it to Aotearoa. It's called the Tainui Waka. And Tainui Waka is a large ocean going canoe in the style of Hokulea or close to the style of Hokulea that ferried the first human settlers from wherever they were, uh, happened to be in the Western Pacific down to the South. So these two... Do we know where they originated from? Or? All Pacific peoples um, are descendants of these, this original culture called the Lapita, and they came out of an area of lower China, northern Indonesia, Philippines, so all Pacific peoples, especially in the West, Micronesians, Melanesians, Polynesians, we're all cousins because we're all descended from the same family. Mm. But the, the boat that came t first to New Zealand was from Tahiti, or do we not? No. Or they don't know. The, the Maori consider the Hawaiians to be their direct ancestors. Uh, okay. So it was a really, really decent possibility that the first human settlers to actually inhabit, settle, and then make a home of Aotearoa were Hawaiians, or were very, very close to um, culturally, uh, culturally, linguistically, um, genetically, very, very close to Hawaiians. Interesting. So, the, the arrival of the first human settlers in this composition is represented by these two sails right here. These two sails are called pea in Hawaiian. Um, they're usually what's the, the driving um, forward momentum of uh, a double hulled canoe of a kaulua. Around it are representations of wind, rain, land, and above it there's a tiki, uh, the face of a tiki. Tikis represent the face of the ancestors um, looking over uh, um, what's about to transpire. A bird at the top denotes a direction, land in the far distance, and then in the lower area I wanted to include um, some designs and some elements that were particularly um, special and uh, unique to me. Um, I love the koru, which is the uh, Maori spiral. It's a symbol of infinity. You see it in ferns as they start to unravel from the forest floor. This large circular element over here is a spider's web. Um, and these tiny little triangles over here are birds' feet. In New Zealand, as opposed to almost anywhere else, birds don't tend to fly. They tend to walk because the area was so fertile and so abundant 
that a lot of birds just lost the ability to fly. And no predators. No predators. So they walked everywhere and it was considered, um, you know, an, an indication of good and um, fertile land. So this entire composition in the style of, of uh, Maori uh, moko, um, their tattoo um, and uh, visual identity, is a love letter to Whaingaroa, to Ragland um, of Aotearoa. And then moving down into this area, the, the timeless uh, blue planet um, fish, bonefish, and right behind it, we have an element of uh, triangles linked at their bases facing down. These triangles are a Hawaiian tattoo element. They're called nihomano. They're referred to as shark's teeth, and they're a symbol of protection. And these half circular crescent elements linked together right beneath it, they're kai, um, or sea waves. And the combination of the, um, the elements together implies that we are protectors of the ocean. We are um, uh, appreciators of, of the ocean and its power and its energy and its mysteries. And ultimately, we are um, uh, in charge of ensuring that it is perpetuated for several generations to come. All right, so next let's talk about the fish spawn models with the Ho'okipa logo. Okay, so this is the Ho'okipa logo, which is on the fish bone boards. Um, we have two sizes of these. These are more um, kind of entry level friendly, all around kind of boards. They, they still surf well, but they have a little bit thicker rails, more volume, more stability. So they're great for entry level paddlers. And let's talk a little bit about the um, artwork here, the Ho'okipa logo. So Ho'okipa is um, not just one of your favorite waves, but on the entire island of Maui, it's, it's one of the favorite waves. It's one of the standards that you know, talent is measured by. Its reputation is decades old. Um, and its cultural richness is, is just undeniable. So above the blue planet Pahu Pahu, we have a representation of the island of Maui um, with two large triangular compositions. The larger one to the left uh, represents Haleakala, and the smaller one to the right represents the West Maui Mountains. Now usually people think of Maui as being, um, if they're looking at it on a map, then Haleakala is usually to the right and the West Maui Mountains are usually to the left if north is on the top and south is on the bottom. In this particular case, um, we're looking at the island of Maui from the vantage of its north shore. And the reason why is because that's where Ho'okipa is located. Because of Ho'okipa's location, it can take swell from 2 feet to 20 feet. It catches amazing wind. It has multiple breaks and it spreads its energy out over a very, very long area. And so to give a sense of that distance, that ruggedness, and then also the proper view of the island from the area that we're talking about, we put Haleakala to the left and the West Maya Mountains to the right. There's color gradation um, on both of them, lighter side to the left, darker side to the right. And the reason for that is that it denotes the rising of the sun. In this entire composition, there's a moon, an upward facing crescent, just above both mountains. The upward facing crescent is called the Hoaka, and in Hawaiian culture, it was also uh, a symbol of the ancient kingdom of Maui. So to many Hawaiians with lineage from this area, um, the upward facing crescent is an unmistakable symbol of uh, that particular area and the families that, um, that descend from there. And above the entire scene, we have a constellation. Um, to uh, conventional astronomers, they'll know it as Scorpius. To Hawaiians, we know it as Manai Kalani. Um, it is colloquially known as Maui's fishhook. And Maui's fishhook is one of the most important constellations uh, for navigators in being able to denote their direction and their heading moving south. Um, so 
it's a simple design insofar as there's not a lot of complexity, there's not a lot of um, fancy uh, uh, noise and, and busyness to it. It's very stately. It only has a few elements. But ultimately, um, everything about this composition reflects Maui and its strength, its heritage, its lineage, and um, the symbols that will always represent the people and, um, and, uh, and their strength. So uh, this particular composition I'm extremely proud of. Um, and this whole Kipa composition is a love letter to the people of Maui. Nice, thank you, Mark. And uh, if people want to find out more about your artwork, um, where can they uh, find, find you or about you? You can find me at www.cairowaterman.com. We're an artisan design firm specializing in unique fusions of Japanese and native Hawaiian um, uh, craftsmanship and uh, grounding most of our designs in Waterman culture and wave writing. Nice. So the fishbone model is available in two sizes and three colors, blue, red, and yellow. We're gonna have a more in-depth video coming out soon about the boards, still working on it, trying to get some action shots and so on. Um, but they're fantastic boards, they, they perform very well. The construction is amazing, very light and strong uh, with PVC sandwich. Uh, I think they came out really nice and they've already been selling well, even though we haven't really been able to advertise them yet. So um, hope you have a chance to check them out. Thank you, Mark, for explaining the artwork. I'm sure that uh, answers a lot of questions for people. Thanks for that. They're interested. And um, yeah, thank you for watching. Please give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe. We'll see you on the water. Uh -oh.